Hello? It's just a quick one on the CSR8645 um, Bluetooth module. I've had this in a drawer for a long time, this thing. And then um, one day I decided I was going to try and integrate it into a guitar effects pedal um, for, for the aux in, you know, to play along. But I didn't bother. But when I started looking into it, I realised it had a differential audio output. So I was a bit stuck, so I looked into that and realised they do a module with that Max 97220 chip on it. Um, but then I never did anything with it. It sat in a cupboard for a long time. Now I've recently inherited a Honda Jazz 2004 or a Honda Fit for people in America and it doesn't have Bluetooth. But I like the car. I, I, I've got a big, fast, expensive car, but I actually like the little uh, zippy little CVT small car. Don't care about scratching it, didn't it? Anything. It's good fun. But it doesn't have Bluetooth. Um, so I pulled these things out again and I've been having a play. And um, I wanted to use this rather than the stuff I've seen on eBay because it, it supports uh, APTX, the, uh, you know, the high quality codec. Um, on the cheap DIY modules uh, on eBay support that they all use some some um, Chinese chip some JL chip rather than this um, CSR which I think might be Broadcom now but I'm not sure anyway I got to the chase uh, the thing works great by the way um, sound quality is, is lovely um, I originally used a switcher um, one of these um, and you know it may work fine because what I've realized afterwards is that I screwed up um, on, with the pinouts alright that there I think I don't know what that is actually that pin up there uh, anyway I misread the labeling so I um, I was wired into some weird pin I thought it was working but just noisy and slightly quiet on one side uh, but then I did a stereo test and realised that it wasn't working. But in the meantime, I ditched the switcher. A lot of people on the forums are talking about noise from switchers, especially if you you share in the the ground between the Bluetooth module and the. I mean, this is a headphone amplifier they call it. This it's, it's a differential to whatever you call not differential, single ended. No. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, Differential to yeah maybe it's single ended I don't know. but it's also used as a headphone amplifier. Uh, so what people are saying is that you need to you want to isolate the ground between the two. Um, anyway, I, I ditched the switcher and what I originally tried was, I mean if I'm supposed to be isolating them, then having one of these isolated transformers, this Traco power thing. This is a this is regulated and will take something like 8 to 16 volts in and 3.3 out it's quite expensive at six pounds but it's good um, but obviously it's only got one output and I thought well I'm not actually isolating them am I if I just use that so what I originally did was uh, I left this switcher on for the amp part and kept that on and put the uh, isolated transformer for the Bluetooth part but the noise was still there and it was terrible and then I looked into it a bit further and realised I'd, I'd screwed up wiring the audio outs from the Bluetooth module so I mean, this may may actually work okay um, they're a cute little module but they're a bit, of, a bit weird to wire into just with the shape that they are, you see I've stuck it on Veriboard um, just wondering where they, I've got a bag of them here somewhere so I can here we go. I'll show you what they actually look like when you get them. Uh, they're pretty good because you you uh, just break this jumper, or you you know you remove the solder from that bridge there, and that, as it says on the back, that switches from 5.2 volts to 3.3. So they're a nice, tidy little thing. But as you can see, the you know the uh, they've got these. The, it's a pretty really thick PCB as well and gold coated contacts or whatever 
and they're really thick but it's like it's a bit of a weird shape but it does happen to fit um, on the very board that I've got so I just laid it down like that being careful not to short out those other pins at the back there um, that was okay but yeah so the noise that I had I wasn't I didn't realize it was my wiring problem I thought it was that so that. anyway I'm waffling the point of the video was I've been looking at that I thought I'll have a play with this CSR tools because I've had this thing in a drawer for about five years as well never did anything with it um, and I've been looking online how are you supposed to wire it up and stuff like that to one of these modules and didn't really find anything straightforward. I found lots of talk about bridging the SPI enable or, or whatever, it has another name. Um, hang on a minute. Yeah, I can't find the screenshots. Um, it was SPI P something or other, but but anyway, on this breakout board, it, it was labelled as. Um, come on, focus. SPI EN. You see that right in the middle there? So we've got chip select, uh, meso, mozzie, clock, and SPI enable. So there was talk about bridging SPI enable to one of the other pins with a resistor, um, a few other things, and. And it just sounded a bit complicated. Well, a bit. Like I just wondered, is that unnecessarily complicated? Maybe that's just if you're using an FTDI and um, level shifters or something. But so I just thought, well, SPI enable needs to go high. So I've, oh, what I've done is I've, I've powered it externally. With my obviously I've got a 12 volt supply here because I'm using this uh, drop down transformer because I'm going to put this in a car. We'll see about that. I know um, automotive electrics and spikes and stuff are not good, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so I've I've just simply wired in the obvious stuff. You know, I've, I've got a ground off my other board there, and then I've wired in the usual SPI wires, um, and the for the SPI enable, I've just wired that straight to the 1.8 volts. Of the uh, SPI programmer, and yeah, as I say, I'm I'm powered externally. I'm actually using some sort of laptop brick. I've got a proper one of the Regal thing. No, sorry, it's a Siglent. I've got one of the big Siglent things, but I haven't unpacked it after moving house a year ago, or the scope. Um, yeah, but anyway, it works. So. Um, written anything to it yet and I'm aware that um, you can sort of semi brick them by writing but seeing that somebody knows how to fix that uh, but yeah open from device reading um, when I originally opened the software I don't know where the software has come from but it said device name some headset for switch or something but yeah, it reads everything fine. The device name there is, is now correct. That is what the device comes up as. So I'm happy with that. I can have a tinker now. And um, yeah, no real faffing around. Just plug this program is just plugged straight in. Um, obviously, this program is probably, it's, it's it'll be a clone or something. It was bought from AliExpress for not a lot of money. But like I say, I've had it in a cupboard for easily four or five years. And um, yeah, it's useful. All right, thanks, bye.